night, the king's health. As the news of King Charles' health resonates around the world, US President Joe Biden was among the world leaders who wished the king a speedy recovery after it was announced that the 75-year-old monarch had been diagnosed with cancer. Searching for peace, US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken visits Egypt and Qatar to push for a deal between Israel and Hamas on a truce and the release of captives in Gaza and Palestinian prisoners in Israel. Relinquishing the crown, the Ukraine-born winner of the Miss Japan beauty pageant has given up her crown after a tabloid report revealed her affair with a married man. And Grammy oldies. As Taylor Swift makes history, the Grammys goes retro. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Verna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Mahesh Jani. Thank you for joining us this Tuesday night on World News. Now, the latest on King Charles' health is coming up shortly, but before that, we want to take you to the Middle East first. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken today landed in Cairo for his meeting with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi as the United States works to advance a Gaza truce and hostage deal mediated by the Egyptians and the Qataris. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Egypt for his meeting with the Egyptian president after starting a diplomatic push in the Middle East yesterday for a deal that would pause the war in Gaza Strip and release the hostages there. The Secretary of State met Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Riyadh yesterday in a first stop on a trip that will also include meetings in Egypt, Qatar, Israel and the West Bank. Speaking with the Crown Prince, the kingdom's de facto ruler, Mr. Blinken underscored the importance of addressing humanitarian needs in Gaza and preventing further spread of the conflict. The ceasefire offer delivered to Hamas last week by Qatari and Egyptian mediators awaits a reply from the militants who say that they want more guarantees it will bring an end to the four-month-old war. It added that they discussed an enduring end to the crisis in Gaza that provides long-lasting peace and security for Israelis and Palestinians alike. Well, in a news that has shocked the world, the UK's King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. A hospital procedure for an enlarged prostate leads to the discovery of something much worse. Prince Harry is expected to join the royal family in London, where the king will now take absence of leave from public events. Tonight, Buckingham Palace announcing King Charles III has been diagnosed with a form of cancer just a week after the 75-year-old monarch was released from a London hospital following a routine prostate procedure. In good spirits, walking out, waving to the crowd with wife Queen Camilla by his side. In the statement released tonight, the palace not saying what kind of cancer it is, only revealing that during the king's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. According to Buckingham Palace, Charles began outpatient treatment today in London. The palace confirms he has shared his diagnosis personally with sons Harry and William, and a source close to Harry and Meghan tells Harry will travel to the UK to visit his father in coming days. Charles, who has been king for just 18 months, was last seen out at church yesterday, and Buckingham Palace says he will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork and will postpone upcoming events. According to the palace, Queen Camilla will continue with a full schedule of royal duties. Well, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says uh, that King Charles III's uh, cancer was caught early and normal communication between the monarch and number 10 are continuing. The Prime Minister said that he was left shocked and sad by the news but is uh, in regular contact with the monarch. Following that story for us tonight is other journalists Aruni Abhikari standing by in Nottingham in the UK with the latest. Aruni? Yes, Mahesh, the king began regular treatment for his condition yesterday. Although he will pause his public appearances, the king will continue with his constitutional role as head of state, including paperwork and private meetings. It is understood the king's weekly audiences with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will continue and will be in person unless doctors advise that he limits such contact. 
The palace added that Charles remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to public duty. The king informed both his sons personally about his diagnosis and the Prince of Wales is said to be in regular contact with his father. The Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, who lives in the United States, spoke to his father and will be travelling to the UK to see him in the coming days. The mood here in the UK seems to be of a bit of concern as people do stand in solidarity with their king. Listen to what most of them said. Um, I think it's very sad. I think it's that, um, you know, it's coming a year after the coronation. And so I think my thoughts are with him, with the family. I hope that they, um, they're all able to rally together and, um, yeah, that he gets well soon. Uh, I think he does a pretty wonderful job, to be honest. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Uh, and that feels like something a, a family would want to go through in private anyway. But having been a person in the public eye for so long, uh, I'm sure he is aware of how much that will connect him to other people, other families who would go through that. It's, it's a bit of a... Sorry, it's a bit of a shock. Like, I'm genuinely... Heart, heartfelt thoughts to, to him that sounds pretty scary so yeah I don't think I would I don't think I'd have anything more than that I think that's you know he's the monarch of our country he's uh, someone who a lot of people take great comfort in and I do too and I think he's a I'm sure he'll fight it like anyone else would but it's uh, yeah it's a, it's a horrible shock I mean you know we loved his mum you know I mean I was born just after she came to the throne. So she was part of my life, uh, my whole life. Um, but that's so sad. I mean, you would think that of anybody, but I wish him well, I wish him well. It's very sad, very sad. As you saw, the mood of the public seems to be concerned, but supports their king wholeheartedly in this difficult period for British monarch. Mahesh? Indeed, uh, thank you very much for that update. Aruni Adhikari of the Dharana World News Special Correspondent reporting from Nottingham in the UK. Well, devastating wildfires tearing through swaths of Chile have killed more than 120 people as authorities warned that the death, call, death toll rather, was set to rise. The legal medical services of the city of Valparaiso confirmed that at least 122 people had died so far. And officials also said that 32 bodies have been identified, 40 autopsies have been conducted and 10 bodies are ready to be delivered to relatives. Deadly wildfires unleashing hell in central Chile. Firefighters surrounded on all sides, risking their lives as the flames approach the National Botanical Garden. The death toll climbing to at least 122 people on Monday morning as first responders dig through the rubble with hundreds more still missing. In the region of Valparaiso, entire neighborhoods burned to ashes. Shell shocked residents recounting their harrowing escapes as the flames exploded. Luis Parra says he and his wife were able to make it out with his grandchildren, but his father and his sister were consumed by the smoke as they tried to flee. More than 165 fires raging across the country over the weekend, fueled by a week of record high temperatures and the El Nino climate pattern. The popular resort city of Viña del Mar hit the hardest, with officials projecting an estimated 12,000 homes damaged or destroyed and an estimated 31,000 residents displaced, many still looking for their loved ones. President declaring a state of emergency to make additional resources available to respond to Chile's worst natural disaster in 15 years. The military also deployed to support the country's all-volunteer firefighter brigade and help maintain order amid the chaos. Officials now saying they believe the fires in Valparaiso may have been set intentionally. An investigation now underway with authorities saying at least 10 people have been detained as the fight continues to extinguish the flames. Well, at least 10 officers have been killed in an hour-long assault on a police station in Pakistan. The officers lost their lives after more than 30 militants launched the attack in the early hours of yesterday. Four others were injured in the two-and-a-half battle. 
It is not clear who was behind the attack or if it is related to the election being held on Thursday. There has been a rise in violence over the last few weeks, including a candidate for the National Assembly being shot dead in another part of the same province last Wednesday. Well, the headache for Boeing? Not yet solved. That story coming up after this break. You're watching World News Tonight. Welcome back everyone to World News Tonight. Now, anticipation is mounting for more forceful Chinese government efforts to end the nation's stock growth. With regulators uh, briefing uh, President Xi Jinping on the market, Chinese stocks are extended their rebound after reports of regulators led by the China Securities Regulatory Commission plan to update the top leadership on market conditions and the latest policy initiatives. Chinese stocks rebounded from five-year lows on Tuesday. That follows a pledge by regulators to support the country's battered equity markets. Hong Kong's Hang Seng rose over 3% by the afternoon, with the country's blue-chip CSI 300 index also seeing strong gains. E-commerce titan Alibaba was among the big winners, rising close to 8%. On Monday, the China Securities Regulatory Commission had said it would take steps including cracking down on malicious short-selling. A day later, it added that it would guide institutional buyers to raise their stock investments. State-backed investors, dubbed the National Team, also stepped up their buying. The moves are meant to underpin a market that analysts say has recently seen panic selling. Many investors now expect more forceful measures in the coming weeks. Investor sentiment has been sapped by factors including China's uncertain economic recovery and the collapse of property giant Evergrande. Last week, a Hong Kong court ordered the firm to liquidate after it was unable to restructure its $300 billion debt pile. Well, the Ukraine-born uh, winner of the Miss Japan beauty pageant has given up her crown after a tabloid report revealed her affair with a married man. Carolina Shino was uh, crowned Miss Japan two weeks ago, but uh, her win sparked public debate due to her heritage. Following that story for us tonight is under the runners Rasita Chandradasa, standing by in Tokyo, Japan with the latest Rasita. Hi Mayesh, a week ago, she was Miss Japan. She was the darling of both local and foreign press. A first non-Japanese, a first European descent to crown as Miss Japan. But then came the big bombshell on February 1st. And today, Miss Japan, Carolina Shino-san announced her resignation. She relinquished her crown. So what happened on February 1st? The Shunkan, Bu the Sh the Shunkan Bunshun is renowned for their investigation journalism. And on their report, they presented, they published that she had an affair with a married man and she had concealed that from Japanese public. And it wasn't just an affair. And people say that it's an extra marital affair. And those kind of affairs is a huge no in Japanese society and Miss Shino was no exception and she resigned today and announced that she is relinquishing her crown and and the uh, Miss Japan uh, council announced that they would not appoint another winner and the, uh, the position would be vacant and that means no one will represent Japan in the next Miss Universe event. Over to you Mahesh. Absolutely an interesting story indeed. Rasita Chandradasa, the Derano World News Special Correspondent, reporting uh, from Tokyo in Japan. Thank you. Now, the president of the Supreme Electoral Court in El Salvador says that many of the votes cast in the presidential and par parliamentary elections in El Salvador must be recounted due to technical issues. Uh, incumbent President Nayib uh, Bukele already uh, claimed victory on Sunday night and looked set to become the first Salvadorian president in almost a century to win a second term. Thousands of supporters rallied in San Salvador's central square to celebrate President Nayib Bukele re-election on Sunday. The 42-year-old secured a thumping victory after voters cast aside concerns about erosion of democracy to reward him for a fierce gang crackdown. This will be the first time where one sole party rules a country in a completely democratic system. We pulverized all of the opposition. 
Today, El Salvador made history once again. El Salvador's Supreme Electoral Tribunal last year permitted him to run for a second term, even though the country's constitution prohibits it. Opponents fear Bukele will seek to rule for life. We have started to defeat our biggest evil. We are on the cusp of winning the war against the gangs. Literally. It's not an exaggeration. It's not a hyperbole. Literally, we went from being the most dangerous country in the world to being the most secure in all of the Western Hemisphere. Few doubted the outcome of the elections. Polls showed most voters wanted to reward Bukele for decimating the crime groups that made life intolerable in El Salvador and fueled waves of migration to the United States. Bukele campaigned on the success of his security strategy. Under him, authorities suspended civil liberties to arrest more than 75,000 Salvadorans without charges. The detentions led to a sharp decline in nationwide murder rates and fundamentally altered a country of 6.3 million people that was once among the world's most dangerous. But some analysts have said the mass incarceration of 1% of the population is not sustainable long term. Rights group fear El Salvador's democracy is under attack. Another challenge will be the economy. Extreme poverty has doubled and private investment has tumbled under Bukele. The IMF, which is negotiating a $1.3 billion bailout with El Salvador, late last year described the country's fiscal situation as fragile. The U.S. Nikki Haley has asked for Secret Service protection, citing uh, increased uh, threats she has received as she runs for the Republican presidential nomination against former President Donald Trump. Haley, the former U.S. Uh, ambassador to the United Nations and now the uh, one major, ge the, the lone brother, major GOP candidate who is still challenging Trump, told the Wall Street Journal yesterday that her campaign has had multiple issues. U.S. Presidential Republic nominee hopeful Nikki Haley said to reporters that it is not going to stop her from doing what she needs to do. Ms. Haley, who trails in opinion polls to Mr. Trump, had been urged by the ex-president to exceed the race and unify the party against Democrat Joe Biden. Ms. Haley, a former U.N. ambassador and South Carolina governor, currently uses personal security while campaigning. Local police are also present at events. Any decision to provide her with a Secret Service security detail would be made by the U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security, who would first confer with the Joint Congressional Committee. Ms. Haley's home was recently targeted by a swatting hoax, in which a call to emergency services is made by someone trying to trigger a response from a heavily armed police court. She said that she was not at home that time, but her elderly parents were with a caregiver. Protesters have shown up at Ms. Haley's campaign events to criticize her support for Israel and Ukraine. Secret Service protection is granted to major candidates under federal law, usually when they look certain to become their party's nominee. Now, a new problem has been found during the production of 737 MAX jets that will force Boeing to rework about 50 planes that have not yet been delivered. Now, the problem was disclosed in a memo sent to Boeing employees on Sunday by Stan Deal, the head of the company's commercial aircraft unit. Boeing faces new problems with its troubled 737 MAX jets. The plane maker has faced turmoil since a mid-air blowout last month raised fresh concern over how well the aircraft are made. Now it's found more quality control glitches. On Sunday, Boeing said it would have to do remedial work on around 50 undelivered MAX jets. That is after supplier Spirit Aerosystems found two misdrilled holes on some of the planes. Sources say the fault is in the window frames and may be present in some aircraft already in service. Boeing says the error does not pose a risk to flight safety and there's no need to ground any jets. But work to fix the problem could cause yet more delivery delays. The aerospace giant already faced a headache after US air safety watchdogs vetoed plans to ramp up output of the MAX family, Boeing's best-selling product. Officials at the Federal Aviation Administration say they won't approve an increase until they are satisfied that quality control issues have been addressed. Any new delays will spark mounting frustration at airlines which have the planes on order. 
That could drive some into the arms of arch-rival Airbus, which already enjoys a big lead in the market for narrow-body jets. Well, the Grammys was held uh, during the weekend, and the fashion, well, find out about that story right after this break. You're watching World News Tonight. Welcome back everyone to World News Tonight. Uh, if you are looking to do something new during this Valentine's Day, well, there is something new that you can think about. Uh, Animal Shelter in uh, New Jersey has launched a Neuter Your Ex campaign for Valentine's Day to help control the overpopulation of feral cats in the area. Now, first names or nicknames only, and then that community cat will be sprayed or neutered, vaccinated, ear-tipped, and then released back to the community. As a result, there are now many Jeffs, Mikes, Ian's and Tyler uh, roaming uh, Camden County and one cat named Gaslight Guy. The executive director of Homeward Bound Pet Adoption Center in Blackwood, New Jersey said that for a $50 donation, anyone can send in the name of one of their exes and they will name a community cat after that person. The director also added that overpopulation of feral cats is a huge problem not only in the US but also around the world. The adoption center takes in over 3,000 cats each year. In 2023 alone, the shelter's workers trapped, neutered and returned over 600 cats. The New to Your Ex campaign was proposed by one of the shelter's volunteers and due to the enthusiastic response from the community, it will be extended past Valentine's Day. Well, on Sunday, the Grammys took place and uh, history was made by Taylor Swift. However, one of the things that also caught attention was fashion. Taylor Swift was a showstopper in a strapless white gown, beautifully draped in the front and cut almost up to her hip. The back of the dress was a corset and she accessorized it with black opera gloves and lots of necklaces. Miley Cyrus was in showgirl mode, arriving in a metal mesh dress. She changed into a sequined one-shoulder gown when she received her Grammy, and yet another change when she performed. This sizzler is a vintage Bob Mackie, shown on the runway in 2002. Legendary designer has dressed the most glamorous women in the world, Cher and Diana Ross and Tina Turner. Miley Cyrus came in for a fitting with the Bob Mackie team. Olivia Rodrigo got the vintage memo wearing a Versace gown. It made its runway debut in 1995, worn by supermodel Linda Evangelista. Sparkle and more sparkle from Mariah Carey, Niecy Nash, Janelle Monet, and Dua Lipa. Michael Jackson's daughter Paris made a red carpet appearance in a black cutout dress. And if she looked different, it's because she covered up her nearly 80 tattoos with makeup. She posted this video on Instagram of the process. Two makeup artists used a cream foundation to brush away the tattoos. The transformation is incredible. Well, that album, uh, Midnight's from Taylor Swift, quite okay. But then again, you know, there's always a conversation about whether it deserves what it got. Well, that is a part of your world tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow at the same time with another edition of World News Tonight. See you then. Bye for now.